So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hi, everyone. Well, welcome to Deeply Rooted, and I'm your host, Robin Norgren. And uh, here we are again, looking at our lives. <laughs> And all that it brings, the ups and downs. Oh man, I'm pretty excited about um, what I'm going to share with you today. Uh, Especially because it was a particularly hard day today. Because this thing called adulting, it's, 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 it's challenging, right? But we're here to remind each other that we are spiritual beating, (laughs) spiritual beings having human experiences, and we're trying to have those human experiences in a way um, that we are self-aware, thoughtful, caring, and kind. And I'm so glad you've decided to join me today. Sing your song. Audre Lorde says, When I dare to be powerful, to use my strength in the service of my vision, then it becomes less and less important whether I am afraid. The question of the day is, what is your biggest fear about having a vision for your life? That's right. What is your biggest fear about having a big vision for your life? Write down the obstacles that come to mind. Once you've done that, eliminate two of them. How does it shift your view on the, quote, thing, unquote, or even things that you want to accomplish in your life? All right, we're back with another segment of Diary of a Montessori Teacher and a Creative Entrepreneur. I'm spending this year documenting what it takes in the course of a year to hold a job, have a family, and also chase that dream of running your own business. I've been doing it now close to 15 years, And I thought it was about time to really slow down and share a bit about what my life looks like day to day, because it really is sometimes very little steps, sometimes no steps at all, and sometimes just taking full advantage of the time that I have um, that somehow opens up in front of me. So I really want you to see the ups and downs of it so that if you are like me and you have this idea Um, I guess more than anything, the key is to have patience. All right, we're up to January 8th of this year. We finished antiquing the maps that were, and they were super fun in the Montessori classroom outside. I need to make sure and take pictures today because many of them want to take them home. I tried two stores to find soil and it was a bust. The Dollar Tree by my work is not the flagship store it used to be. I remember I used to drive to that store specifically because of its large, diverse selection. Now it just has bare shelves. Time to pivot. I decided to bring in about 50 rocks that are larger sized and are dispersed around my front yard. I picked up some sea glass last week at another Dollar Tree hoping to tie it in with the maps idea of looking for treasure. My plan is to distribute the rocks on the playground, have two wooden mining bowls, 
have two bracelets that allow for us to keep track of which children are where, and pics of the sea glass at the observation table, just to give them an idea of what the treasure looks like and where it can be found. Have them find 10 pieces only, bring them back, and document their findings using watercolor paint. January 14th. Our treasure hunt was short-lived because toddlers actually came to the playground area at 10 o'clock instead of their designated time of 1030. So a few did get to try this idea and they had a good time, maybe eight students. And so now I need to keep in mind that I have one hour to create quote something unquote before we lose access to the playground. On a great note, the director stopped me as I was leaving to say a parent commented that her child had been resistant to come to school all week. But yesterday, she said she was excited to come to school because she created a treasure map and she wanted to find treasure. So that is why the effort is worth it. If a child has to leave their cozy home for eight to 10 hours every day, can we at least have something enjoyable for them to do? January 15th. The week ended nicely with conversations in the classroom about robots. We have these wooden blocks that have not really captured the interest of the students. And I know from experience that robots are always a hit and super fun to draw. So that combination on a Friday worked together beautifully with these blocks where they could create robots as well. The students in essence created a blueprint of a robot that they could then build 3D fashion with the blocks. It's been one week of me officially navigating the outdoor environment, and I am reminded again that less is more. Sometimes I think we adults are so fearful that the students will be bored that we must fill the shelves of the classroom with things to do. But I see that even from the very first week when I did nothing but observe, the students always seem to find something to be delighted in. All right, today's writing prompt is write about leaving. So you can take this prompt and make it a time where you just kind of sit and maybe conjure up some ideas around that statement, segment, fragment. Uh, you can use this as a writing prompt. You could take it into your meditation time and prayer time and see what comes up for you about this idea of leaving. Here are the words I wrote down for the words, write about leaving. Leaving work, leaving my profession, leaving my hesitation, leaving my expectations, leaving, leave, I need to leave choices, leave, go, walk away, release. How did I get here? I need to leave. But what if I stayed? Staying is the more difficult choice. I love a fresh start, new beginnings, just didn't work out. Visualize leaving, but stay because staying, at least for now, is necessary. Just stay for years and years. It's got to get better, surely. But what if it doesn't? 
What have you lost when you don't leave? And what did you gain by staying? Well, thank you so much for stopping by. And as you know, um, for many of you who've been here with me from the beginning, I just had my two-year anniversary on the podcast. Started actually December 12th of 2019, which is pretty incredible. Uh, Over a hundred episodes later, and here we still are. Um, It has grown and evolved um, into something that I'm really pretty proud of, something that I feel like is super unique out here in podcast land in that I truly do try to find things that um, help us to continuously live our lives as spiritual beings without it simply being through a church lens. And I really, truly hope that it has encouraged you. Um, For those of you who'd like to support the work that I do, you can sponsor me on my podcast over at Spotify. You can also check out my work on my website at www.robinnorgren.com where I have creativity books and sewing kits and art journaling kits and even some limited edition um, rabbit stuffed animals because I am a rabbit fan and a rabbit mama. But All in all, I truly do appreciate you just being along with me. And um, I hope that you feel inspired to share what it is that I'm doing here and inspired to share your own work as well. All right, so I've been mentioning to you that I now work in an outdoor environment classroom in a Montessori school. And so I have gathered up a few um, books from my library. Um, I will post them over on my Instagram account. So feel free to come over and check me out and follow me there. But here is an excerpt from a book, Born to be Wild by Hattie Garlic. And here's one of her suggestions. And I'm sharing this because I just got through watching um, The Office. (laughs) Um, And many of you who uh, might be fans will remember that episode when I say what it is I'm going to talk about but it's called try parkour is it a bird is it a plane no it's us pounding around and scraping our shins again if your neighbor if your neighborhood like ours has more sidewalk than soil then at least there is parkour the sport otherwise known as free running has made pavement payment <laughs> pavements peerlessly cool and turned hemmed in streets into playgrounds of endless possibility. It seems ironic that this, the most urban of sports, should bring people closest to the freedoms of a creature in the wild. Vaulting off the city architecture, you're as free as a bird, leaping like a leopard, swooping like a seagull, dodging like a deer, or, in our case, possibly more like a a dachshund, Parkour, it turns out, is actually quite tricky. Practicing in our local playground, we often come home covered in grazes more than in glory. But here are some basic moves you can, with a lot of practice and caution, perfect and impress with. So here is a list for you adults. When your family is ready to try parkour, make sure you start small and continually assess your kids' abilities. Number one, perfect your jump. Find a bench or low wall and practice jumping safely and comfortably to the ground. First jump with both feet, landing with them together, then practice with one foot leading you. Alternate your leading foot until you get the hang of it. Once older children have tried a leaping foot jump, practice taking a running jump and jumping while moving. Then they can practice from a slightly greater height. Number two, learn to leap over things without bumping them or stopping. Find an object, not too intimidating to start with, to jump over. 
At first, the height of a few bricks will be fine. Take a little run, take a little run up to it, and leading with one foot and lifting both legs to clear it, jump over it. When you can do this without slowing down or touching the object and carry on running after landing, then find a slightly bigger obstacle to jump over. Number, number three, perfect your vault. You'll need a long and short object to perfect this. A low wall to start with. Place both hands on the wall's surface and use them to propel your body horizontally over it with your legs flung out to the right. As you lift over your body, pick up your right hand first and continue to support and propel yourself with the left one until your feet are swinging down to the ground. Got it? Now, try to run up to the wall. And number four, balance better. Balance, we've learned in a wobbly fashion, is key to parkour. You can practice it by walking along the short walls that border pavements, standing on one foot wherever you are, and, or using low playground equipment. For older children, there are lots of guides and videos online if kids want to learn other moves. Learning to roll properly after landing is a good one for them to tackle next. Just encourage them to take it slowly and responsibly. Thank you.